How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels? How are you guys doing? Are you happy? You having a good day? I was. I was having anywhere between a between a neutral to pretty good day before I decided that today was going to be the day that I watch more Madoka Magica. Now, I managed to narrowly escape watching Madoka Magica without having some sort of trauma-induced mental breakdown, and that was super cool. I was wicked thankful for that. Because even though it did turn out to be like, maybe my favorite anime of all time, and I'm very thankful that I got to experience that with all of you, boy oh boy did my life insurance rates go way the hell up. Because it was truly uh, one of the most harrowing and traumatic experiences of my entire lifetime. This this is such a such a brutal show to recommend a person. And just as I'd finished that show, just as I as I sat back and did one of these to Madoka Magica, all of my DMs flooded. The moment, the very moment I was able to relax, take a breath, maybe even get excited for a new show or two. All of you were very quick to rush to my DMs and be like, nah -uh -uh, bitch, you ain't done yet. So here we are, evidently not done yet, about to watch the Madoka Magica Rebellion movie. What are my expectations going into this film? Negative, of course. No, that's not entirely true. I will say I am cautiously optimistic going into this movie, though. The optimism comes from an obvious source. I love the original anime. It's one of the best written pieces of media I've ever seen. The animation was spectacular. So this being a movie, I only have high hopes that it'll get even better. The caution, though, does come from the fact that this is a movie based on an anime series, which in my opinion and experience, aren't ever as good or better than the original anime. Demon Slayer Mugen Train is the obvious exception where it just wildly surpassed everything season one of Demon Slayer had to offer. You could also make the same argument with Jujutsu Kaisen Zero and Jujutsu Kaisen season one. However, for all other anime movies, they've never really like lived up to the hype of the original series for me. And I really don't want my memory of Madoka Magica to be sullied by, like, a potentially mid-film. Because right now, Madoka Magica, in my mind, is, like, peak anime, borderline peak media. And I don't want to have to put a mental asterisk next to that statement that says, except for the movie. Thankfully, though, the sheer volume of people who have been recommending me this film leads me to believe that it is at least pretty good. So, again, cautiously optimistic. Now, technically, this is the third Madoka Magica film. However, the first two are just recaps of the original series condensed into two-hour chunks, and this one is like a direct sequel to where the original anime left off. So that's super exciting. We're getting right into the sequel. Fuck the recap. The trauma is plenty fresh enough. Let's get into it. <laughs> Cool. Sick. I'm glad this is immediately off-putting and weird. Only Madoka Magica could make me this unsettled about a weird little stuffed bear. I don't even know why I'm afraid of this thing. I just... I, I just am. <laughs> Yo, it's my girl! Nice, we gotta actually see her be a magical girl this time. I know being a magical girl is like a horrible, traumatizing experience, but the last time I saw this girl, her consciousness was fused with the cosmos, and all trace of her existence was erased from history. So it's nice to see her back, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Did I... Did I miss something? You guys were leading this thing to a snowy log cabin so that you could have dinner with it? Was this an ad for the concept of Thanksgiving? <sighs> it's morning already. Good morning, Cube. You! Gloopy Duperson, my old rival. Yeah, super not excited to see that he's back. By the way, uh, what the hell is going on here? Like, what, what's the timeline situation here? Cube! Cute, 
cute. It's too late to convince me to like Gloopy Dooperson, guys. It's not gonna happen. Just because you made Space Charles Manson adorable doesn't mean I'm gonna forget all of his Charles Manson-y crimes. Also, why is he a Pokemon now? What, did they lobotomize him? Why is he only speaking in syllables of his own name? Hey, honey. Some more coffee? Did anybody else have a fucking stroke trying to read that clock? How are you supposed to tell time when every number is desperately fighting for your attention? What is your clock turning into a witch? What happened to your guys' sense of aesthetic unity? Oh yeah? Well, no one ever said having fun was gonna be part of the deal! Speak English, you son of a bitch! I know you can! Yo, I'm gonna be honest. I'm like 10 minutes into this movie. And I am thoroughly lost. Why is this film trying to gaslight me into thinking I didn't watch the anime? Okay, class. Just because the date of the Mayan apocalypse has passed, don't you dare think you're safe. All right, well, this lady's still nuts. That's good. That's some form of consistency I can grab onto. 41% of a certain country's population believes the second coming of Christ will happen in the next 40 years. The seven trumpets of revelations may blow any minute. Oh my god, it is Christ coming? Is Jesus Christ going to show up in this show as a magical girl? Out of every prediction I have ever made on this channel, of which I would say at least 80% have been accurate, Jesus Christ showing up in this movie as a magical girl is the one I need to come true the most. Also, I love how this woman's like, statistics show that 40% of a certain country believes that Christ is going to eventually return. Tell us which country, coward. You can't just go around giving people half statistics. It sounds like you're making shit up. You know, 9 out of 10 dentists actually recommend you use this brand of toothpaste. Okay, but which dentists? Don't fucking worry about which dentists. What are you, a cop? If the only thing I have to look forward to is hitting 40, I'd rather it all ended in one big explosion. Dude, can somebody get this woman a fucking therapist? Or an exorcist? Or just away from children? I won't let you down. <laughs> we'll all do our best together, Homura. Homer is just like, Oh, mommy told me about you girls. You guys are the ones who made that homophobic girl run home crying, aren't you? Oh, speaking of which, what did your spies inform you that two girls were seen holding hands a hundred clicks to the south? Also, why is this bitch living in Midgar? Everyone else in this show is living in this quiet little town in the woods. And this chick's over here living in the year 3094. That's what I love about you. <laughs> right. I'll see you tomorrow at school then. Okay. Why is this so ominous? Some horrible shit gonna go down with this girl? Is Kiyosuke really about to turn another girl into a goddamn witch? Whatever! Would it kill him to use some of that drive and passion on me for a change? Whoa, whoa, easy with all that anger. All right, save it for the gays. Do you not hear me earlier? Two girls were holding hands today. All right, your energy is better spent elsewhere. <laughs> oh, I've had it! I don't need Sundays anymore! Oh shit, yup, here comes the spaghetti. This chick's about to get the bouillonnaise treatment. What the fuck? What is this thing? Did mommy tame the spaghetti verse? Are there multiple gloopy duperson's in this timeline? Somebody better start giving me some fucking answers real fast. I am losing my mind. I was explicitly told I could watch this without watching the first two movies. What the fuck happened in the first two movies? <laughs> This is like the coolest transformation sequence I've ever seen. Her hatching out of herself was so fucking sick. Dude, I love how they each get their own like 30 second long transformation. They are all super long, but the fact that each girl gets her own theme music and animation style is so fucking sick. Like, I'm glad it's not like Sailor Moon or the Power Rangers where like each girl's transformation is roughly the same thing. I'm glad that the transformations like reflect their individual personalities. 
Oh, she's breaking it down. She's busting a move. I think Sayaka's is probably the coolest one, right? Like, the breakdancing part was undeniably cool, but the part where she, like, explodes into herself made this a 10 out of 10. <laughs> Madoka, are you fucking kidding me with these dance moves right now? Do you even rehearse this shit? Saika came in like she was auditioning to be in Step Up, and you're showing up looking like you're auditioning for your third grade dance recital. If I were to rank these transformation sequences based on, like, most sick to least sick, it'd probably go Sayaka, Kyoko, Homura, Mami, Madoka. Honestly, Kyoko's is the best one, uh, but Sayaka absolutely tearing up the dance floor is just way too good not to bump her into the number one slot. But you gotta calm down! Five million! I like how the name of her attack is just the literal description of the attack. Check out this new technique I've been working on. I call it Seven Forks. Oh shit, what does that do? What do you mean, what does it do? What is this weird dinner-based power system this movie's trying to push? Why do they have to have brunch with every witch they defeat? Is this like a, like a courtesy thing? Like a Geneva Conventions thing? Round cake, right in front of me. Who do you think this cake could be? How fucking dare you? How dare you show mommy petting the thing that bit her head off? I get that this show is proud of itself for traumatizing a whole generation of anime fans, but it doesn't have to take this hard of a victory lap. No, it's not me. I'm just a little old raspberry. That big brown cake's too red, don't you know? Somebody help me. Am I being pranked? What the fuck is going on right now? I'm the juicy apple in this story. That big round cake loves baby, can't you see? Dude, I'm gonna say it. This is a bop. This slaps, dude. This slaps the teeth right out of my mouth. This song or game or whatever it is needs to become more mainstream because it looks like a fucking blast. I wanna be able to roll up to a party and be like, yo, who is the cake? And not have to explain myself. Also, 20 bucks says Homura's the cake. I got all my money on Homura. Could the cake be Homura? No, not me. Fuck! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm ruined. Fuck, Homura! I thought you were the cake! Could the cake be Madoka? No, it's not me. Then who the fuck is the cake? It has to be you, Madoka. There's nobody left. Nobody else could possibly be... Oh my god. Oh my god, it's me. It's... Always been me. <laughs> Is she the cake? Can somebody please answer one of my fucking questions? This whole cake thing has been an emotional roller coaster. Also, I think I understand what's happening. Instead of fighting and killing witches for their grief seeds, this is a timeline where they, like, throw them a dinner party, like a symbolic dinner party, and, like, resolve the witch sitch peacefully, right? That stuff's all sour, and I don't do sour. <laughs> Your taste buds haven't developed past the first grade. Yeah, but my fists have. <laughs> movie gonna like absolutely fucking devastate me at some point like i'm not complaining i'm having a good time just like being in this world again i love the characters and it does feel really good to just have more madoka content however things are going like way too well right now and that is usually a terrible sign when it comes to this show is that how battles are and have they always been like that oh yep there it is it's coming Oh 
oh yeah, it's definitely coming. What is this creepy shit? Why is every face the worst fucking face? What, what, what does Homura have some kind of like terrifying psychosis? Homura, do you want to try some of my fried chicken? Dog, fried chicken? What is this bougie ass school lunch? Dude, every day for lunch from first grade until high school, I ate a sandwich that was comprised of mayo, bologna, end of ingredients. If you saw a kid eating the lunches that I used to bring to school, you would legitimately call social services. And this chick is showing up to lunch with fried chicken to spare? I got no idea what your trip is, girl. But whatever it is, I don't think you're pulling my leg here. Not you, you're on the level. Why does Kyoko talk like a cop from the 70s in this movie? Earlier she called her teacher a space cadet for acting weird, and now she just hit Homura with three extinct phrases in a row. What fucking geezer wrote this movie's dialogue? Something's definitely wrong. Either we missed the crossroad, which I highly doubt, or something else is going on here. Nobody wants to talk about the fact that the moon is hurtling towards the earth right now? Could that not be added to the list of possible things that are wrong? Maybe they've both noticed, but it's just so existentially terrifying that neither of them want to bring it up. Hey, is the moon looking a little- No. But it's not usually this big, right? Yes, it is. I feel like it's concerningly large right now, though. Okay, fine. Is there anything we can do about it? I- Guess not. Then why are we even talking about it? I'm stressed enough as it is without having to worry about the goddamn moon eating the earth right now. That nothing exists beyond the city. What? Really? Kyoko, I'm sorry, but could you not tell the others for a little while? Crazy mood shift after dropping that insane theory on her. No way you just told this girl that nothing exists beyond this city and then hit her with the smile like that. Got any idea what's going on? Yes, which is why I don't want you to do anything. For now, let me handle this. Cool. I'm glad this movie turned into Bloodborne, cute anime girl edition. Glad this turned into a fucking nightmare, literally out of nowhere. My therapist has been getting bored lately. Someone is trying to replace our memories of what happened with false ones. And trapped us here, in this false Mitakihara city. Thank God, 40 minutes into this movie, I finally get an explanation as to what the hell is going on. And all it cost me was having to Google, can you skip the first two Madoka Magica movies, like six times during the course of this video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you silly thing. Mind your manners at the table, or you're going to turn into cheese. Bitch, is that a threat? Is that something you can do? When did you become a dairy mancer? <laughs> I met her before anyone else. We've had lots of adventures. <laughs> Far too many to count. I can't believe they're trying to gaslight us into thinking that Bebe has always been a character. This is literally that Rick and Morty episode, right? My goofy brother Steve? <laughs> He's been living here almost a year now? Are you losing your mind? Mommy's over here like, what? You mean Schlumbo? America's favorite Madoka Magica character, Schlumbo? I've always had Schlumbo. Come on, what are you talking about? There, there's no mommy without Schlumbo. This thing's definitely the witch keeping them all trapped in this labyrinth, right? It's drawn in a completely different art style than everyone else, and I'm pretty sure it literally speaks witch. Do you remember how Bebe came to stay with you? Or when you met her? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> Bebe's just like, hey, what, what's with all the questions, huh? I'll answer this, mommy. Don't, don't even worry. Me and this broad go way back. The only magical girl in Mitakihara City, the only one who comforted me and cheered me on, was Bebe. Yeah, that's right. And I ain't never asked for nothing in return, did I? Did I? Yeah, so just shut your trap and be happy that Bebe's here. You're much braver and stronger than that. Not really. I just act confident because that's what's expected of a senior magical girl. God, mommy's always just like one step away from a mental breakdown, no matter what timeline you put her in, huh? I know what you mean, though. Things are better now. It's the kind of life I used to dream about back before I met all of you. Who knew I'd have a $3 million penthouse apartment all to myself by the time I was 14? And it's all thanks to my sugar daddy, Bebe. What are you doing? Is something wrong? I'm sorry. Madoka. I can't believe Homer is about to murder Bebe right in front of Madoka. I remember what you used to be. You hear that? I know what you really are.
Poor Bebe is just like, come on, man, I'm just Bebe, man, I ain't do shit. I was going to wait until I understood the situation, but you were hurting Bebe, and I will not stand by and let that happen. First off, I love that they're about to fight over this fake Pokemon character, who I am 80% certain has never existed up until now. Second, why would Homura resume time? Like, just keep time paused until Bebe's dealt with. Holy shit, she just used alchemy! Dude, her clapping those guns into existence was like, the coolest thing ever. Her clapping those guns into existence is no longer the coolest thing ever. Dude, why does Madoka Magica have, like, some of the best fights in all of anime? Like, this show has no right having fights this good. They're fighting in a spider web of bullet trails. <laughs> This is hilarious. How has nobody turned this into a gif or a meme? Just like two anime middle schoolers casually trying to shoot each other in the head. Both of them apparently fucking strapped to the nines. All right, girls, for this next scene, I want both of you to breathe into a tin can for about 30 seconds straight. You think you could do that? Okay, and Homer had just passed out. Dude, it is unfair of this show to have this caliber of writing and dialogue and this caliber of fights. Like, what an amazing coincidence that the person who knows how to write some of the most emotionally crippling dialogue in all of cinema also has a taste for hype. Well, we aren't getting anywhere. Yeah, like, why is Mommy exempt from Homura's time-stopping abilities? Like, the second they started fighting, why didn't Homura just stop time and go back to fighting Bebe? I just feel like that would have been a better plan than this. <laughs> Holy shit, anything's a better plan than this! No, stop! <laughs> oh my god, she shot herself! Oh my god! <laughs> Oh my god, she wrapped the ribbon around the bullet! What the fuck? Why are you going to kill mommy? Just go back to Bebe. What, is Homer just like, you know what, while I'm here, I never did like this bitch. <laughs> Holy shit, she was a spaghetti monster the whole time! Your magic is quite fearsome, but in a fight, you're a fool if you think you'll always have the upper hand. Wait, what? Was that not confirmation that Mommy's a witch? That's just something Mommy can do? What a fucking sick power. I don't know where that power was when she got her head chomped off, but whatever. Maybe it's like, I don't know, maybe it only works if it's a non-head related injury? <laughs> Weird ass time to wheel in the harp. When you find the witch who made this labyrinth, what you gonna do with her, Homura? Well, obviously. Dude, the cinematography is wild in this scene. This scene specifically is just popping off for absolutely no reason cinematography-wise. But she deserves to die? <gasps> Hold on, are you siding with a witch? Like you said, they're what we become. I like how Sayaka is the one who sympathizes with the witch, considering she becomes one in the main timeline. That's sick. That's just like a cool parallel for Sayaka's character. I'm the same old Sayaka you've always known, transfer student. <laughs> That's fucking sick. I have no idea what that means, but it is so sick. I, like, is she the witch? Is she the one keeping them trapped here? I'm so confused, guys. It was sick. It was a really cool image and like probably some cool, if it's not literal, it's cool symbolism. And I get the symbolism. It's what it means literally that I don't understand. Cute. Bitch, what was that? Are you behind this shit again? 
How are you still ominous? You can't even speak! It hurts me to see you suffering so much when all I want to do is help. I wish you would talk to me. Dude, I love the dynamic between Homura and Madoka so much. It's so tragic. It's so brutal that Homura has like years and years worth of memories with Madoka, but Madoka can only ever develop like three months worth of a relationship with her at a time. Like, it's so cool that this is like a cosmically unrequited love. I had a dream. And it scared me. Are you guys being invaded? Why are there so many fucking airships in this city? What is this dictatorship the show doesn't want to acknowledge? Of course it would. I'd hate to leave you and Sayaka. Or Mommy and Kyoko. Or my mom, Dad, and Tatsuya. Dude, why is her braiding Homer's hair absolutely breaking me right now? This is, like, so beautifully sad to watch. It's so... Fucking vicious. You probably don't remember anything either. Oh, the braid unraveling is so much worse. Dude, that's fucking awesome. Who knew braid symbolism could go this hard? It's like Madoka's the one holding Homura together, which is like represented in her braiding her hair, but it's also like forcing her emotions to stay tucked in. And then her hair coming undone is like her emotionally unraveling as she like confesses her feelings to Madoka for both the first and millionth time. That's great. That's awesome stuff. Tell me where you are. Let me know and I'll come get you. Dude, I knew the airships were fucked. No non-fascist city has a fleet of airships constantly hovering above it. When did it even happen? When did I become a witch? I'm gonna be honest. I have a loose understanding of what's going on right now. So Sayaka's not the witch. <laughs> Confirmed. And also, so it's, so it's Homura, I guess. I'm sure you didn't really want to know the truth. And yet you couldn't bear it if you didn't seek it out. Oh shit, Gloopy Duperson's first line of the movie came in so hard. Dude, I knew this slippery bastard was still up to no good. We wanted to know what happened to a soul gem when it's cut off from this phenomenon. Thanks to you, we witnessed some very interesting results. I have gone from loosely following along to hardly following along. This has gotten so confusing. There's like unknowns floating around too right now like the pokemon unknown the only thing keeping you from completing your transformation into a witch excuse the metaphor but you're like a chick that wasn't able to break out of its shell and matured inside it oh my god for a second i thought he was using the word chick in like a derogatory way excuse the metaphor but you're like a broad who doesn't know when to keep her trap shut also in all fairness, that metaphor did help me understand what's going on here. And you did the inviting. You unconsciously chose your targets. Once you let them enter, they were trapped. I like how Kiyosuke got dragged into this hell dimension because two girls he doesn't even like are obsessed with him. In our humble opinion, you should all conclude your existence by transforming into witches. I forgot how much I love this dude's inappropriately optimistic attitude. He always sounds like he's pitching you this awesome new idea, but it's always terrible. Wait! You can't be serious. You're creating a curse? What are you thinking? It's spreading too fast to purify! What are you thinking? All I want to do is trap and control you. Would you calm down, you hysterical bitch? If you do, you'll spend the rest of eternity living among all these curses. Oh, oh, he's gloopy. He's finally gloopy Duperson. This is the gloopiest Duperson has ever looked. Did you guys know this would happen? Did you guys know that I was setting up the perfect joke seven videos ago? I have become the best at what I do! You lose your chance to see Madoka Kaname again forever! You can't want that! This poor guy is just desperately trying to talk his way out of becoming a hot fudge Sunday right now. Would you shut up already? Wow, noted. Shutting up. I just want to say thank you for coming here to this god-awful place. God, the character designs in this show are so fucking good. What a perfect design for Homura's witch. This is way cooler than Sayaka's witch form too. Like, I like that I can still tell that it's Homura. <laughs> it's 
Seems a little immature to have a French horn coming out of her ass, but a cool design nonetheless. It's like a bad joke. Wait a moment! That's Homura Akemi! You're not really going to fight your friend, are you? You bitches are ruining my pyramid scheme here! It's okay, Homura. We're not gonna let you go on like this. Promise. Yo, what? That was fucking sick! Did she just do a magical girl transformation? Into a witch? So can Sayaka, like, harness the power of her witch form now? Is that what's been going on? Like, she can tap in to her potential as a witch? Because that's super cool. I'd love to see all the magical girls, like, one, I'd love to see their witch forms. I don't need to in terms of, like, does the plot need it? No. But I'd love to see what they look like. And two, it'd be so sick if they got, like, like, shadow magical girl forms or whatever. You know what I mean? Like a, like a dark magical girl form, which is, like, activated by, like, harnessing witch power. Because in the end, I did have one regret. You. I missed you. Oh, what? What the hell? That's so sweet. Where did that come from? I always thought Sayaka and Madoka had a thing for each other. I never saw this pairing coming. The amount of love these girls have for each other is so genuinely moving. Wow, that's a sentence that would have gotten me beat up in high school. But seriously, for how like traumatic and depressing this show is, it's so good at having moments of just like unabashed love. Seriously? I came back because I wanted to eat cheese one more time. Shut the fuck up, baby! You're not a real character. You shouldn't go off by yourself. Madoka. Whatever happens to you, good or bad, you're still you. And I would never abandon you. Wow, that is some imagery. Fuck, dude, that's so good. I love when, like, media that's handling, like, topics of suicide don't shy away from, like, non-lethal cutting. This is such a, like, weirdly specific beef I have with media, and it's not even a real beef because I understand why they don't do it. You don't want to, like, encourage cutting or, like, it's tough. It's very tough to, like, depict cutting in a way that isn't potentially dangerous, so I do get it. But at the same time, I grew up with so many people who used to cut themselves, and, like, it's so, it's such a big thing that happens, and media loves depicting, like, depression and suicide sometimes, but when it comes to cutting, it's always like, oh, we, you know, we don't, we don't talk about that. And it, like, again, I do get it, but at the same time, whenever a show, like, gracefully or, like, accurately, or not even accurately, but, like, like, depicts a topic or an issue uh, respectfully and, like, w w in a well-done way, people who are struggling through those issues look at it and they're like, oh, fuck, like, I'm seen. Like, this, this fucking thing sees me and respects me as a person despite the stuff I'm going through. And it always sucks that when it comes to cutting, media loves being like, yeah, like, you know, people who, who commit suicide, they're just, they're just going through stuff, and that's tragic and should be treated with respect. Uh, not like those freaks who slit their wrists, though. Anyway, oh, that's a long-winded way to say... I, l I respect that imagery because it is shocking and it is ballsy, but I feel like this show has very much earned that type of imagery. And I respect that, like, they don't try... Because suicide's such a heavy, intense topic. And so to sanitize any of it feels weird to me. It's borderline the darkest possible topic. And it's so it's weird, like... Uh, anyway, I've said my spiel. Wow, that was uniquely cathartic. Madoka Kaname? Yes. She's the law of cycles, and one day, she'll take us too. Everybody's kind of just, like, saying shit right now, huh? Like, I get what she means, but I do feel like this movie is getting a little too wrapped up, and it's, like, cosmic nonsense. I've waited for this. 
my god, speaking of cosmic nonsense, is this movie not over? I thought we just eradicated Gloopy Dooperson. Look at her soul gem! What are all those horrible colors? It's not a curse. What is that? Obsession? Desire? Oh wait, I might love this actually. It has to be this way. I'm never going to let you go again, Madoka. I kind of love this. I love that Homura has become obsessed with Madoka. Like, that's such a great progression of her character. Especially since she's perpetually stuck in this one-sided relationship with a person who cosmically cannot feel as strongly for her as she does for them. You know what's sick, too? Is that this is kind of foreshadowed in that hair braiding scene. You're right. I'm not a magical girl or a witch. Madoka. Is this literally the thing I asked for? Is this the thing I asked for, like, ten minutes ago? Did Homura just get a fucking shadow form? This is sick. I feel like I'm watching Bleach right now. So if you want to know what I've become, I suppose, if anything, you could call me a demon now. Gloopy Duperson looks so in over his head with this. He's just sitting there like, Oh my god, we are fucked. For some reason, you were all pulled in with her. And now you can't return to where you came from either. Whoa, what a shot. The cinematography in this show is genius. That shot is unironically genuinely genius. Because first you've got Sayaka framed between these two straws, which is like your classic, a character feels trapped within a box kind of framing. Like if you ever wanna visually represent that a character feels trapped, frame them like, in a box, if that makes sense. But she's also framed inside of Homura's drink, and those straws can suck her up and devour her at any moment. So really, she's trapped inside of, like, a lethal box that at any moment can just suck her up, which shows just how at Homura's mercy she is. And on top of that, Homura is, like, playing with the rim of the glass, which just only further cements her dominance over this situation. Oh yeah? What do you do next? Destroy everything? Dude, Sayaka got so fucking hype the moment she started using her witch as a stand. Are you okay, Sayaka? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. It's just... I don't know. I guess when I saw you guys and heard you both say good morning again. If your friend ever starts tearing up with joy at the sound of your voice, completely out of nowhere, send their ass to the guidance counselor. People are constantly making little cries for help all throughout this show, and everyone's just like, ah, oh, well, that's Sayaka, she's just sad sometimes. Do not associate with men who refuse to eat eggs unless they've been half-boiled. And you boys better make sure you don't grow up to be men who complain about how the darn eggs are cooked, understand? Speaking of people who need therapy, how have we gone through like 30 different timelines in this show and there isn't a single one where this woman's in a stable relationship? Let's give a big welcome to our new classmate, Miss Kaname. Come on in. Wait, is this about to end like super dark? So Homura, in her obsessive rage, created a timeline where Madoka exists, but she's the transfer student, which has like, fucked up the resolution of the anime, right? There's like five minutes left in this movie, and if this is how it ends, that's going to be fucking crazy. I knew it. They always did look better on you. <gasps> this ending is fucking crazy. All right, that's Madoka Magica Rebellion, I guess. Here's the thing. Mixed opinions. I'm mixed in the sense... I gotta watch it again, I think. It's so confusing, and it kind of gets, like, lost in itself. Like, it gets lost in its own cosmic mumbo-jumbo, I feel, because the best part about the original is just how, like, grounded... I mean, it's nonsense, the original anime. But, like, the best parts of it are, like, the really human moments. Like, the really grounded human dialogue. The great characters. And it's weird, the reason I'm mixed is because this has all that. But it's just way... Like, I'm, I, I was confused for so long 
that I couldn't thoroughly enjoy a lot of it. But that's kind of the point, right? It, and I respect that it's ballsy enough to be like, we're going to make the viewer uncomfortably confused for 40 minutes and then another hour and 20. <laughs> the action's really good. Like, there's no dip in quality of, like, dialogue or anything, which I see in, like, a lot of, like, anime movies. Like, a lot of anime movies based on anime series feel like they're written with lower quality writing, you know? To me, this doesn't have that. The fights are great. The animation's great. Every, yeah. I mean, it's not like, I wouldn't watch this and give it to someone and be like, this is why you have to watch Madoka Magica. Like, it's not as good as the anime. But it doesn't, like, I like it as a companion piece, and I really like how weird and ballsy and grim it is. And I hope it continues, like, I don't know, I respect it. I, yeah, I dig a lot about it. The ending is really having me, like, reeling right now, which is cool. It's a cool feeling to have. Yeah, excited for the sequel to this. And glad that there is one. Like, that's awesome. I can't believe this was, like, what people got for, like... Like, this movie came out in, like, 2016. And then for, like, eight years, this was the ending to Madoka Magica. What a brutal ending. But I kind of love that. Anyway, yeah, let me know what you thought of the movie. Um, let me know... Yeah, that's it. Just what you thought of the movie. And I guess your favorite jokes from this video, as usual. And I will see you guys next time. Black Butler, Book of Atlantic, coming soon. A wink. Hold on to me, baby. Won't you come a little closer when I leave for now? I wrote down.